<laughs> West Philly, they've got yeah. fucked up with this storm. Oh, did they? I haven't been everybody you know, between the fucking the half of Beirut exploding. Uh, that I, video know, is kind of crazy. That video is batshit. That is a crazy. Every one of those videos. Hi, baby. Every one of those videos. The is slow mo shot yeah. where you can see buildings the shock before wave. the shock wave just lifting uh, apart. It's wild. It's very very Top scary stuff. Bullshit. Yeah. Um, and there's a picture circulating on Reddit of what that building looked like before it blew up. Do you see that? Mm. Uh, no. It was the most jankily, <laughs> like literally, like if it would be perfect for that Reddit subreddit that's like OSHA fails or whatever the fuck okay. it is. Like yeah. that, uh, the forklift like, fuck ups. Yeah, like they literally made an ammonium nitrate bomb in a building. Like they just did, and then they fucking welded a door onto it, and it went fucking kaboom. Like mm -hmm. they, they they made an Oklahoma City bomb. You know, right. like, Jesus like, Christ. holy shit! Yeah, like whoever set that up is like a fucking. <laughs> He's <laughs> out. That guy's gone. He's nowhere. Yeah. Oh yeah. That guy's fucking vaporized. So like, the the I only mean, decent thing is that it, like the building was way out at the port, right? Like it was right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. If that was in the middle of the city, like oh boy. That's terrible. Yeah, I mean, you saw that. You saw the shockwave, man. That's the video, up. the car or whatever that was driving on the bridge, and the shockwave oh, yeah. hit it and it blew it out and blew the airbags up. Yeah, yeah was crazy. crazy, crazy. All right, is this the show, or do you, are we going to do to start the show? Have a thing. <laughs> what, soft we can, open. Open. We can just be the show. I mean, I just roll in, whatever. It's cool. I think when we 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 recorded with Lynn Woodward, and I think we spent probably forty minutes or like just. And she like went full in, and I was like, "So should we start the show now?" And ah, I just, just dropped cold. the audio, the music. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just fade it in, just fade it yeah. in wherever. Yeah, right we here. talked just about fade, just fade it in right here, here <laughs> now. So, so we're looking at now. Yes, right now. everything that's <laughs> happening now is happening. Do you know that John Candy's barf outfit is going up for auction and the estimated value is $7,000? That's and it? the description uh, says some stains. That, that's actually, <laughs> given the aura, that's below what I'd expect. I would expect more as well, and that's why yeah. I have registered to bid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's this auction? Do we need to del delay the show a week or two? Like, it's, yeah, right. right? No. <laughs> Revisit. Guess I what also I bid on Anthony, one of Anthony Bourdain's watches, which um, that's baller. Yep. No, well, I mean, I suppose it doesn't. It's not necessarily baller just to put a bid in. Uh, I bid <laughs> on it because I thought that I would be able to get it for a reasonable price because um, although it was from his estate auction, there was zero paperwork provided of any kind from anyone connecting that watch specifically to him. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, I'm in still up to this certain amount. And it ended up selling for approximately eight times. <laughs> what? Oh, what? Yeah, no. Somebody paid like thirty-five Run. G's. Someone paid thirty-five G's 35? for a for a, like a four thousand dollar Panerai. Yep. Yep. With, With no, no track record. No yeah. papers. Run. But, but they're gonna have a good story. But if you're like, if you're, if you're rich, like not like, like I do pretty well. But I'm talking about if you're fucking rich. Like fuck you, rich. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if you're the kind of guy that options up, you know, the the, the carbon fiber door handles on your Ferrari F8 Tributo for $8,200, <laughs> you know, what's 30K on Anthony Bourdain's watch? You can wear right. it at the bar. You know, right. oh, oh, did you know I'm wearing fucking Anthony Bourdain's watch, ma'am? <laughs> and my, my Ferrari F8 is parked outside. It has carbon Show fiber stopper. door handles. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, wait, hold on. Speaking of carbon fiber, how much did you say in options there were on that, on the car you were, you just had? The Ferrari F8 Spider? No, 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 no. Um, the, the Lambo. Urus? The Urus, yeah. Oh, the Urus. Urus. Yeah, the Urus. <laughs> no, the Urus, uh, the base price was 207 and the as tested price was 270 So there were 63000 right. in options. Of those, That's probably close. like... 25 to 30 was just carbon fiber stuff mm -hmm. okay um i just gave it's back uh yeah it's a lot it's a lot and, and especially on that car um 
it just when you get more than like three feet from the car, you just don't see it. You, I mean, right. it just dis- it disappears. And it's like so a it was, base Cayenne's worth of options on a Cayenne. Yeah, it's, a, it's a Boxster. It's a full <laughs> Boxster of options. But actually, I, you know, the, um, I just gave back uh, yesterday uh, the Ferrari F8 Spider, which I mm-hmm. had uh, for a few days. And I mean, as you can imagine, it's very good. Um, surprise! <laughs> shocker! Shock, you know yeah. what I mean? it's shocker! It's Wait, very a good. modern Ferrari was good. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but it had uh, it had a hundred thousand dollars in. Whoa! Has it? It uh, and and a lot of that shit. A lot of those options. Okay. Were, car just carbon fiber stuff in fact what was very funny is it had like a seven thousand dollar uh carbon fiber engine f- engine manifold cover what but it's a spider and you cannot see it like if you back. open <laughs> even if you like open the hard toppy mechanism to like where you would go to change the oil you see about three or four inches of this piece that you've paid all this money and the whole entire piece is underneath the uh, some you just can't see it it's about it's telling good. people it's there the same way when you don't have the Ferrari with you. Right. Well, that's why you buy an Urus so that people <laughs> yeah. know you drive a Lamborghini when you're not driving your Lamborghini. <laughs> okay. So hold on. So, so the Ferrari had, what was the percentage of the MSRP that the options added? Because 25, Jeep, it was 25. It was 25? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Jeep, you Jeep, can do that. In a, you can do 25 in a wait, Porsche wait, wait. pretty easily as well. Yeah. Jeep dropped off a Wrangler Unlimited for me yeah. yesterday, which yeah. is my third press car. Woohoo. Like it's awesome. But no, the I mean, base listen, price, dude, you're in the game. You're playing, base you're price playing was, in the game. It was a $40,000, a base MSRP. And this thing is $60,000. It mm-hmm. added 50% back. Like, well, hang on. Are you talking about the base MSRP of a two door Wrangler versus no, like no, no, a no. loaded gladiator? What are we talking about? No, here? this is base Wrangler unlimited versus, oh, versus the thing that's parked outside, like fully okay. optioned Rubicon. 33 percent that's a lot it's crazy lot. Yeah. yeah i mean but but okay so look in defense of press cars with astronomical price tags the the point of that is not to scam the customer with some artificially low base price and then right. really have you testing the uploaded vehicle the, the point the point of it at least the intent of it is to have you journalist experience what these options feel like. Mm -hmm. And so I frequently will drive a car that has a seemingly egregious option list. And then I will say at the end of my videos, like, look, you can skip this, 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 and this definitely go with this. Mm -hmm. Don't even think about not getting this, you know? And so that's useful information for you to have, even if, yeah, it's 30, it's, it's like, you know, 30% cars like, such as Ferraris and such as um, certain uh, 911s of GT cars, especially GT cars, will often have um, 25, 20 to 20, 20 to 30 percent um, options added on. Mm-hmm. That's pretty frequent. And, but, uh, but at the same time, I've seen some really interesting uh, fleet guys who build, you know, a lot, those cars, a lot of them are spec'd out by the mm-hmm. regional PR people. They get to right. what they get. Wasn't there and like so, a purple rolls at one point? Rolls hilariously paints their press cars all kinds of wild colors. There's no such thing as a normal colored Rolls Royce press That's car. Amazing. It's very funny. The last one I got was creamsicle. It was orange and white on the inside. It was hilarious. <laughs> is that like a orange corporate on the outside, mandate? white on the inside? What is that like a corporate mandate? Like why? No, I just think that they do it to, is to that, because bright colors photograph better. I mean, they just do. It's true. You know, that's the, there's a reason that the, 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 quote, launch color exists. You know, that right, one right, funky right. color that every sports car comes out with for that first year. Mm-hmm. You no, know, it's never black. It's always a green or a yellow right. or an orange or a, like a gold or some crazy shit. Psycho like, green on the GT500. Yeah, yeah. Every, it's, every it's, new not, it's not blue. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, that it's was a good exactly blue, too. for the magazines. Yeah, it's, it's for the magazines. Yeah, performance blue, yeah. Um, and so uh, I forget how we got done. Oh, the big options list. But big there's options. a guy at Porsche who sometimes builds like strippers. Mm-hmm. And so I, I had, he, he built a, a Turbo S a couple of years ago that he wanted to keep the MSRP under 200K. So like all it had was sport exhaust and center lock wheels and nothing else. 
and it was fucking awesome. It was so cool. Manual like seats. manual seats and shit. Yeah, oh, that's seats. awesome. Yeah, it was great. Who gives a shit about the seats? You said it Seriously. somewhere like once. Who cares? Cloth right. seats, manual, the best. It's Speaking so of seats, so I work for Volvo. We had an oh, really? XC. Yeah, Dude, well, the not, not star corporate. One seats are like amazing. I so I've heard. I work for a dealership, not for corporate. Mm. But we had a an XC90 Excellence come in mm. yesterday, which I had never even seen before, yeah, and it has really good seats, crazy backs, like captain's chair back seats with heated yeah. and cooled and massaging in the second row. Yeah, so that's like, sort of for the chauffeur. Crazy. Crowd. Yeah, that's the, if you want to get chauffeured in a Volvo. But the autobiography from a Range Rover kind of thing. Effectively, no, it's the equivalent of the of autobiography plus long wheelbase. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. That's I, even don't think in the XC, I don't think in the XC they actually stretch the wheelbase, but I think they, they do move the rear seats further they into do. the trunk. Yep. No third row. I don't really like in the Range Rover where they the, the, they stretch the doors in the back. What's well, funky? It looks uh, it's ugly. You know, the if proportions you're driven, are off. Like, yeah. But I picked my parents up. I got one. My parents came to visit me, and I picked them up and drove them around in that shit. And they <laughs> thought that they thought the long wheelbase range was like the dopest. The dopest shit. They were so into it. It can't be much better so to get chauffeured around him, no. No, it was super sick. Yeah. It was when we were looking at properties for uh, for West Side. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Uh, congratulations oh. on your uh, TCO. Yeah. Done. Yes. Done. Have, no we, shit. We have a CO. We had, the last week was TCO. Now it's a CO. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. We, we're done. Yeah. So I was over there today uh, unpacking boxes and. Uh, actually moved my cars upstairs nice Yay. oh wow that's got to feel like very, the biggest step <laughs> yeah very excited to move my cars i haven't really been able to keep cars upstairs yet so, mm. so now we can yeah when we had zach on he was like uh things are going they're they're happening i don't know what's happening <laughs> Well, that, that was the problem. Nobody knows what it's it, building a building. And for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, I have a place called West Side Collector Car Storage. And it's for people in the west side of LA uh, to store their collector cars. It, it, it really, the name speaks for itself. <laughs> and, uh, Self explanatory. 100% understood. <laughs> yeah. And we built it from uh, the ground up. And so I've never built anything before. Certainly not in Los Angeles, which I've been told is the hardest place you could build outside of uh, San Francisco or Hong Kong. And uh, so uh, it, it's like building a project car, you know, the, the paperwork beforehand, the waiting, the looking like it's done, but not actually being anywhere close to being fucking done. You know, the, the, the surprises, the, the how could this even be, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that stuff is, uh, is pretty consistent, pretty consistent across the board. I, um, I work for a general contractor uh, in marketing. Uh -huh. And so following your build has kind of been interesting because we I, clearly the company I work for, we, we have no intention of going to California and building anything. No, nobody wants to come here and build anything. I 100% <laughs> understand why. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I have, you know, what? it's funny when I post pictures of construction on Instagram and stuff and, you know, everybody's a contractor, apparently. Oh, apparently, yeah. <laughs> apparently everybody at home has a fucking graduate degree in construction, uh, except for me. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, there was a couple instances where people were like, oh my God, you used them and you should have only, only used the blah, blah, blah. And well, you know, and I'd go to my contractor like, did we use the blah, 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 blah? And the guy was like, are you on the internet again, Matt? Uh, <laughs> do you understand that we normally build hospitals and bridges? We can handle this. Yeah, this is you nothing for that. not listen to anybody on the internet. You are literally paying us to do this correctly. <laughs> That's their job. Exactly. That's the conversation I want to like, work. And like... <laughs> Well, I'm acutely aware of what I don't know. You know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. I, I'm so aware of the fact that I've never done this before. I'm so aware of the fact that I don't know the first, I mean, I might know something now, but at least two years ago, I didn't know the first thing about construction or dealing with the city or permitting or any of this crazy shit or concrete. Was it, you know, was it always city or did you ever have to deal with the county too? The city is the strictest part okay. of the, the city the city issues your permits mm. now i maybe if we were building outside of the city we'd probably have to deal with the county but but it, where i am the city of los angeles is it sends all the inspectors issues all the permits signs all signs off on everything yeah 
Yeah. And they're the hardest because you got fire, you got earthquake, you got environmental, you got to clean your rainwater. Mm-hmm. Um, it's there's a there's a there's a lot going on. The stories yeah, about having to repave stuff we don't have. Yeah. certain sections of that's the fucking road crazy. that I, yeah, I built own. a road. I built a road. I paid. I built, and now it wasn't just repaved. We had to do um, what do they call it? A six four cut. I think they called it a six four cut, which basically <laughs> means you had. We didn't just pave it. We cut six inches and then four and four inches, and had to do layering and for for the weight of trucks and stuff like that. And and actually, they're like, it it was. It, do we want to talk about this? Is this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fine. We're so, I mean, look, you want to talk about fucking construction? We can talk about construction. But... You said truck. That's kind of on point. <laughs> like, so, so when you run utilities under a road, like the wires, right? You have to put the wires. You can't just have like wires surrounded mm-hmm. by dirt with asphalt. You have to put the wires in a box. And the box goes, the box withstands the weight of cars. It's and like a load and, rated box. Correct. And everything. Correct. Okay. Exactly. It's a load rated box. Now, normally in Los Angeles, you have LADWP, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. That's a city owned utility. So you're installing water, you're installing power, or you're permitting water and power. It's all one deal, right? So you go to one place. They permit it, they delegate, it's done, right? I am on a little triangle of land with about 20 other buildings that are grandfathered into separate non-city-owned utilities. Oh, you fuck. still have to deal with the city for the permits. Now, they don't like each other because <laughs> the city doesn't want other p- private people to own the utilities. They want the utilities. And so to go back to the load rated box, we had to decide what kind of box to put in. The emails and phone calls went back and forth between the utility company and the city for, I think, eight months. Jesus. My so God. like, it was, I mean, it was like, it was, and I, and I, and I, I started like getting mad at my contractors and stuff. Like, why isn't this going? And he's like, Matt, sit in on one phone call, just one. And so I sat in on a phone call and the guy on the other end of the phone sounded like he had just eaten a fistful of Valiums or something. <laughs> like, who, 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 who are you again? What, what, what's the project? What is the project? And you just go, uh, oh my God. Just like, I, I can't believe this is, this is actually the way this works. And, and uh, you want, you want, literally you want to be like, okay, who do I bribe and how mm-hmm. much? Like you're, you're going right. there. Just who scoot it through. Just give me the name. Give me a name. I'll, I'll get the envelope. Like whatever, dude. I know this is how this works, right? And they're like, no, you can't bribe anybody. This is mm-hmm. like straight bureaucracy. Can't go, can't get around it. It's like, uh, okay. I had a, so, I had a uh, cousin buy an RV in California. They were living out mm-hmm. in LA, sold their house. They bought an RV to drive back to Missouri, outfit it, and then go live out of it for a while. Mm-hmm. Bold. But they didn't get a clean yeah. title. Oh. So they got all the way back to Missouri and tried to title oh it and register it. Oh, God. And had to call California, and California was like, hey, by the way, that RV dealer went out of business. There was oh, oh boy. shenanigans. Yeah. yeah. So What you do there is you have to get a bondsman, and you get a title bond against the bond. So, so you have to pay up 10% of the value of the RV, but if mm-hmm. someone comes around claiming they own that shit from the dirty Stairs, title, they pay yeah. the, they pay them off. <laughs> it's hilarious. I didn't know about this That's until terrible. recently. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, title bonds are nuts. So but yours isn't yours. They eventually like found somebody because it was just a, a huge process. They eventually found somebody who gave them the entire checklist of like mm-hmm. everything that they would need to do. Mm-hmm. And so they only had to fly out once to California to get all of that checked off. That's not yeah. bad. Well, I had a, I had this DeLorean uh, a few years ago that I bought mm-hmm. and it was literally a barn find. It was off, off the road for like 28 years in a, in a storage unit in San Pedro, California. And I, I put it back on the road. We restored, I, we I, you know, paid DeLorean to restore it. I, mean, <laughs> I don't turn wrenches. Um, uh, you don't, you, I, you don't want to drive anything. I put a wrench on. You just don't, I don't, you don't know what it does. Only limitations. So, <clears throat> yeah. And so, uh, it took, but I, but I had the original California blue plates that were issued in 1983 when the car was sold, and the the car had like 2,200 miles on it. It was mint. The oh my god! Mint. Yeah, and so 
of course I wanted to keep you reuse those plates, you know, <clears throat> it was very important. And it literally took me 10 trips to the DMV to get it sorted 10. Oh. And eventually on the ninth trip, after the ninth trip, I somehow Googling or I forget how I did it exactly. It wasn't like illegal or anything, but I got a hold of the actual like director of the DMV. Like there, that's a person in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And I got a hold of them or their assistant. And I explained what I was trying to do. And I explained that every time I go back to the DMV, they were very famously, you know, they were, they were, I, Every time it was, well, I don't know who you spoke to before. <laughs> I don't know what they told you. Uh, but after a while, I started making them write their names on the forums. And that even that didn't help. So, so you could just so be I like, I talk to Mark. Yeah, I said, I've, I've been 10 trips. Like, here's the thing. This is all I want to do. I own the car. I had, the, this, I had to get a title bond. Because with the, the reason it was a barn find was because the dude who bought it new got upside down on it. You know, when DeLorean went. Stashed upstairs. it away dashed it away and fucking dipped out and i don't know when the statutes run out on something like that but right now yeah, <laughs> 2013 <laughs> and, and, right. and and so he had there was a lien on the car to a bank that no longer existed oh so fuck i had to get a title bond that's crazy title to that car in case someone came knocking saying they owned it yeah that's wild anyway the that's, end of that story, you can't make that shit up <laughs> no the end of that story is that i got a, a letter notarized from the, I believe it was the secretary of the Department of Motor Vehicles, saying, "Let this person register <laughs> this fucking car." <laughs> like, the I dude in the bank are gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm like this is ridiculous. And and I went back to the DMV and they looked at it and they were like, "I need to show this to my boss." I'm like, "Get your yes. boss. Yeah. <laughs> Get your I'm not boss. This is your your boss. Back on. <laughs> like, <laughs> register my fucking car." Yeah, that's it, crazy. It sounds yeah. like my favorite scene in uh, Hot Fuzz. Where they're like, "Hey, we're gonna send you to the country," and he's like, "No, no, no! I wanna, I wanna file a complaint." And they're like, "All right, what, you want me to call him down?" And they call mm -hmm. him. You want me to get chief inspector? Like, yes, get like, yes, get yes. everybody. <laughs> so, was that the biggest automotive like paperwork or any kind of hurdle you've ever had to go through? Uh, for registering a car? For yeah, for anything not related to the building that will soon house cars. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I bought a house, you know, I've had to do well, yeah, lots of yeah. taxes, but right. no, as far as, as far as something that, that should be fairly straightforward, like registering a car, that's probably the most absurd, um, mm -hmm. that it, that it ever got. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I, I don't think, uh, I can't recall any, anything worse than that. I mean, if you want to talk about like things that like are seem ridiculous given their alternative like uh i did this project called the million mile lexus project <laughs> where i bought a lexus ls 400 with you know just under nine hundred thousand miles on it and uh we got it up to a million miles right and so i couldn't do that by myself i had to lend it out to to first friends and then pretty much strangers mm. uh and you don't just lend a car out to strangers if they crash it like you you know you get they run over a baby like you get sued right, right. so so i had to put a like a commercial insurance policy on that car that was good for like other drivers to drive it you know what i mean and uh and so the car you know i had bought the car for like i don't know twelve hundred dollars or fourteen hundred dollars like nothing right and the the commercial auto policy on it was like forty seven hundred dollars a year that's to crazy insure, to insure yeah <laughs> And they, they wait, they let you keep it on like just regular passenger tags, even though it was insured commercially. They're not a commercial auto insurance policy doesn't necessarily. Oh, it's not registration. Plans. Okay. Yeah, no, it's not like commercial. Yeah, no, it was registered normally. It was registered okay. to a, to a company, to the smoking mm -hmm. tire, not to Matt Farah, but, but it had a commercial auto insurance policy on it. No, you, you would get one of those commercial plates if you had a, a truck with a, you know, like a 10,000 gross vehicle weight or some, some, some crazy number of gross vehicle weight and then registered it. it commercially. A business can own and register cars under regular tax. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So my, my next, Is anyone's question. still fucking listening. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's probably about the same as normal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of want to pivot from that to, is the insurance what makes all of the all cars films cost so much or is that just more about no, shooting it 
Yeah, no, um, no, no, there's no insurance. For sure. <laughs> I don't know what insurance you're thinking of, but I assure right. you it doesn't exist. <laughs> Zach, so, tell you who nope. did? No, 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 <laughs> no. Whatever he said. <laughs> no. Um, I'm just more worried uh, about your guys' safety on this. <laughs> no, when yeah. we made the first movie, it was a goof. And we said, okay, well, if we could just make our expense money back, like that would be great. Mm-hmm. The second time around, we were a little busier. And so we said, okay, let's, if we're going to do this, we need to, to make our expense money back, but then also like pay ourselves like a little something. Right. Make your time. We make worthwhile. a third one. But, but, even, but for the first two, the four of us were the talent and the camera operators. If we make another one, I have said, and Tom Morningstar keeps going, let's make a third one. Let's make a third one. Yeah, real fucking easy for him to say. He's building a cabin in the woods. It's easy it's to easy, say It's that. easy for him to get away right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, he keeps saying we need to make a third one. If we're going to make a third one, it, it, the, the opportunity cost of being in the woods for 10 days making the film is quite high. Mm-hmm. And so, and also, um, we cannot have the four primary cast members also be cinematographers. I mean, we, we could shoot B-roll or something, but right. but there needs to be other people whose job it is is to to make sure the cameras are rolling when funny right. things happen. Because right. you don't, you, we don't have the kind of data storage to just speed it all and drive for eight days, and we don't have the the manpower and so if you think about you know what does it cost to 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 pay someone a, a, an okay living wage to to go be away from whoever for for 10 days in the woods to shoot a project where they're fundamentally working 24 hours a day um uh, except when they're sleeping you know you, that that shit adds up <laughs> seriously it adds up very quick it's not like it's some it's not like it's some like unfathomable amount of money you know right. the first film costs like twenty five thousand dollars the second film costs somewhere around 60 mm. the third one would basically cost the same as the second one cost except you'd have to add four shooters or three shooters and an audio guy you know seven yep. days on the road so you'd, you'd end up at 100 grand right where you'd end up and i've yep. i've maintained the same position the last three years Somebody find me a hundred grand. Right. Let's go make a fucking movie because I am busy <laughs> and I don't have time. Like I want, like, here's the problem with that. The problem with making all cars go to heaven three is if we just bought shit boxes on Craigslist and went and did that and went camping and without any of the cameras cost each of us a thousand bucks each. Right. It's right. The cost it'd be a of the fucking box, fun right. vacation. Yeah. And it'd be stress free and you'd dip yeah, around all you want. Yeah. And, and, and it would be great. And you wouldn't have, like, like, I love, don't get me wrong, like, I really like my job. Like, I have a great job that I chose and that every single day I wake up and continue to choose. I could fucking mm-hmm. walk away from my job tomorrow if I wanted, but I don't. I keep doing it because I want to. But nothing sucks the fun out of doing something fun faster than having to film it. Mm-hmm. Nothing. I, like... I, it's really cool that I get, that I discovered this thing called YouTube in 2006 and was able to make that into a career. Right. And, and like, I'm sure there are folks who, for whom the act of making videos is in itself the most fun thing they could be doing. Right. But for me, the act of driving the cars is the most fun thing I could be doing. And videos are in service to that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I love doing that thing with the cars. Right. As long as there's another person there fucking holding the camera. Taking care of all the yes. stress on site. Yeah. Yeah. Like the one takes thing I do, I do those myself. Like it's me. Mm-hmm. It's just me. But I set up all the cameras and like, and it's fine because it's a fairly minimal amount of camera work. Right. I, right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not late. I'm just not, it's not a lazy thing. It's just like, we're talking about making all cars, you know, and the fun aspect of it could be had for six pennies. Right. It's the film aspect that requires all the investment, all the work, yeah. all the, the, the parts that are not fun. The stuff that weighs on you when you're supposed to be enjoying it. Yeah. And, and all the front loaded parts that come with raising a hundred thousand um, dollars. It's a job so, in itself. Well, yeah. You need, like you people need think the, my uh... job's making car videos. Like, fuck that. My job's like 87% ad sales, three and a half percent driving sports cars <laughs> and whatever's left dealing with social media. 
I mean, seriously, like, yeah. where do you think the, the actual business part comes into the entertainment business? Yep. I don't fucking drive cars for a living. I'm a fucking salesman. Marketing yourself. Also yeah. drive cars. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's all sell, selling ads and sell, making ads and scheduling that stuff. And, you know, having the content to, to, to do the ads and it, like that, that's the job. Like that's the mm -hmm. whole job. Everything else is in service to that. Right. People don't see that. I mean, people think it is exactly just on the surface, just the making videos and suddenly ad revenue appears. Well, it, people are, it's obvious what people think the job is because very, <laughs> very frequently email me and say, Hey Matt, how do, by the way, you, are you guys, I'm hearing my computer's notifications in my headphones. You guys aren't getting this, right? We're not Zoom works those. correctly. No. Cool. Yes. Sorry. Just um, my possessed HVAC system. No, yeah. yeah. I just want here. to make sure my computer's not fucking up your show. Um, people frequently email me and go, how do I get your job? And I tell them exactly how to do it. Mm -hmm. I, exactly. And I start with the very first most obvious thing. Learn Adobe Premiere Pro. Mm -hmm. And immediately, that's where they vanish. Emails I have, I have literally, <laughs> I'm talking about in 12 years, I've never had a follow-up to that email. Oh, Not shit. one. That's because hey, they're still trying get, to learn how it. How do I get your job? <laughs> learn Adobe Premiere Pro. <laughs> Conversation really? stop. Oh, shit. Because they don't mean that. They mean, how do I get press cards without doing any work? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. How do people so, watch the videos that I make without actually pulling any of the effort? Right. And I'm not, it's, it's, it's just like people want to know. That's the answer. The answer is you have to learn how to do all the sucky jobs that nobody thanks you for or sees or whatever behind the scenes mm -hmm. in order so you can so that you can be the guy in front of the camera that gets all the credit for it. <laughs> so I was, I mean, <laughs> for not, better or worse, um, the host gets credit for everything. Show right. does well, host That's gets fair. credit. Show's a piece of shit, host, get, host gets blamed. You right. know what I mean? Guy, the financial guy fucks it up and ruins it for everything. Like that's the host being greedy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the, the ups and downs are laid on the host and that's just an ego thing, mm -hmm. you know, but, but all, but, and you can have someone else do it and you can pay them or right. you can do it yourself and keep the money. Bands are the same thing though. Like if the band's got a good front guy or front woman, they generally do okay. But if the person on the front of the stage talking to the crowd sucks, they're going to fucking tank. There are average bands with great singers, but there are very rarely great bands with terrible singers. This is true. Very rarely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Very true. Yeah. yeah. I can think of six average bands that have like great singers like right now, but I can't think of any bands where like, oh, this band would be so good if that guy would shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, you're, you're fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> like the number of people that can play instruments well. Yeah. It's pretty high. It's true. Well, it's higher than the number of people who can sing, sing well, well. And, and, be, and be that person. You it's know? charismatic. Yeah. 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 I've, seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of live music in my life. It's, it's, it's true. Oh. There's not, there's oh, not a I lot of that. amazing. I know, me too. Oh, so many concerts have been canceled. Fucking what, sucks. What's this thing you're talking about here? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I had, I, had, I had tickets to four Pearl Jam shows. and yeah. was, there, was there anything in Whitefish? anything there were like there were things in whitefish well so I, i'm asking this question selfishly because i was supposed to go to glacier and whitefish end of mm -hmm. july and we canceled like god late april early may right and then we, you i listened to your I show went to the, i went to the end of july <laughs> yeah <I know. laughs> and you um, were there and you said it was swarmed and i was like well i'm kind of glad it, i stayed home swarmed wasn't is not the correct word it was busier than i expected okay. jackson mm -hmm. wyoming was swarmed, swarmed. Okay. jackson That's crazy was shockingly busy um that whitefish was a nice sense. little place it was very cute um it, it was it was a it, glacier is really incredible um i i can't recommend that highly enough um no whitefish was cool we didn't you know it was weird i i think they're not exactly friendly towards towards visitors at the moment i think they're not really about having visitors but we were part we of this right so we were part of this adventure drives group and we booked two thirds of the nicest hotel in town. And so they let us keep that reservation. Mm. And, they should be uh, happy about that. Cause they're probably not making much money. Otherwise. They were the only people in the hotel. Um, 
And I don't know. I mean, like, I, I totally understand the position of someone in, in a small town that does not want tourists coming. Like, I, I really get that. And we try to respect that kind of stuff. And, and look, uh, peop, you know, we were cool about masks and all that kind of stuff. And no one, you know, you know, obviously traveling right now is a riskier activity than staying at home. We brought a doctor with us on the trip. I don't know if that doesn't fix everything, but it's, 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 it's showing an effort. Certainly. Handy. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm, I maintain mask indoors, wash your hands, hand yep. sanitizer. Don't touch your face. That's it. If you yep. do those things, if everybody did those things, this would, this would end fairly quickly. And uh, so that's, and, 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 you know, we did a lot of outdoor dining, you know, right. <clears throat> Drag a lot of whistle pig on the roof. <laughs> doesn't sound terrible yeah we're supposed to leave bright and early tomorrow morning for a trip that's like all the questions around it but like I mean, fuck, you know, a chance to just leave the city for a little while doesn't suck we ju- i just drove three thousand miles uh 12 nights we stayed in um you know i don't know nine hotels mm. I, we ate in restaurants you know we did the things we did the, we we did all the things that you're supposed to do and <laughs> We, we were fine. No, we, not us, nor anybody that we were traveling with got sick, and we were doing those very basic right. things. So, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't think staying – if you're not compromised – I'm not a doctor, but if you're not right. immunocompromised yep. and you do, do the, the four basics, mm-hmm. there's not really a reason that you can't safely road trip. Right. Be respectful. I, don't be an idiot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by far the sketchiest part of our trip was the one-way flight to seattle to, to yeah. start it like seattle. that that flying was like and, and 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 they you know delta actually did a pretty good job but still that like mm-hmm. that mentally was the sketchiest part of it all the hotel rooms felt really clean mm-hmm. oh shit i just i read speaking of sketchy i read today that they're still expecting two hundred and seventy-five thousand people in sturgis for the bike fest Oh, that God. sounds sketchy. <laughs> yeah, that sounds bad. I mean, we went to Yellowstone and it was very busy. Um, and I think there, I think there were some kind of restrictions uh, for volume, you know, for what they normally will have. But I was shocked. It was busy. It was really busy, and it was really busy with no foreigners. Right? Normally, you've right. got a mix Four of buses. Americans and, yeah. and foreigners, um, and this was busy with no foreigners. Mm-hmm. So. I think a lot of the, a lot of people have the same idea. We right. <laughs> we'll go. Let's go to the wide open spaces. Uh, Were there a ton everybody. of like RVs and camper trailers? Oh yeah. Because First time for everybody. We've been trying to <laughs> rent a toy like a big like twenty eight or thirty two foot trailer. To, we go with the quads up north, and it's like you can't even. They're yeah. literally unrentable right now. Anybody who owns an RV or or, or a hauler or any kind is in that shit. Or mm-hmm. selling it or renting it for a massive premium. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's, I mean, look, I, and I don't blame them. There's, there's very little traditional vacationing you can do right now. It's mm-hmm. the summer, kids are out of school. You know, what the fuck are you going to do? What do you, you know, I, 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 oh, I Chris. We, saw, we, saw, <laughs> we saw a lot of families uh, that looked like they were having a pretty fun time. You know, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't blame anyone for doing, doing that right now. But it was weird because normally you're driving to Wyoming. Utah and stuff, and these sort of single lane roads between the towns and the parks, usually fairly empty. Man, mm-hmm. there was like it was a fifty-five mile an hour, you know, thirty car caravan for a lot of this stuff. Whoa. So it, it was, yeah. uh, so it was just, you know, it wasn't that you couldn't get around. It mm-hmm. was just, uh, you know, it wasn't that sort of open road, you know, road trip driving that you w- might kind of look forward to by by going mm-hmm. to that part of the country. Yeah. D- definitely double-edged sword. I don't know. I'm look, trying to look on the bright side. Maybe it'll like revitalize people's interest in some of the small towns and random places that you drive just for the sake of going. You know, I, I think that's true. And I think that what I would do if I was going out on another road trip is focus on those secondary smaller parks, the state mm-hmm. parks yep. um, and the national forests and stuff, as opposed to yosemite or zion or any of the the really primo Mm -hmm. national parks i would not really do right now we my wife and i are really big hikers we love Mm -hmm. hiking and so we went to yosemite and we went to glacier at 6 a.m 
like it's up there up north so it's actually like light it's yeah. 6 a.m but but we went there at 6 a.m and there were a bunch of people and like it wasn't packed like we were able to hike and it was mm-hmm. nice and, and but there was folks around right and when we came down at like 9 30 it was like oh boy this Endless is line. fucked up <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was it was gnarly and we're like all right we're, we're getting out of here you know and so, right so i would definitely focus on the uh the, the, the less obvious uh, mm-hmm. well you're from we went to a beautiful park by the way that i'm I'm sure it'll be totally blown up after the show. We went to a beautiful, <laughs> that was a that. beautiful park in um called Snow Canyon outside of St. George in Utah, which okay. is if you're driving uh through Las Thanks. Vegas to the Utah, the 15 goes from LA to to Vegas and then up into Utah to Salt Lake City. So you pass through St. George, it's your first city in Utah. And uh, there's a there's a little state park called Snow Canyon. It's spectacular, uh, beautiful lava formations, and, and we hiked there. It was great. That looks fucking awesome. Thank you, Google Maps. <laughs> yeah, Snow Canyon is beautiful. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Um, no, but we we've seen the same thing. Like, I know you're from the New York area. I don't know if you know Minnewaska or Mohonk. I know like, Mohonk. Yeah, that sounds okay. familiar. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's big time hiking there, and uh-huh. the parking lots are closed off by park rangers at like 7:45 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Lot yeah. full signs, and then you try to go to the smaller place to hike, like the you know deep woods backcountry kind of place and you yeah. can't even park oh no like, guess That's, we're going it's on an be tough. <laughs> on, the east co- on the east coast it's got to be tough because there's just less there's less space we have we like Nevada, so far. You know? <laughs> right. yeah. there's a lot of open space that's just yeah, outside of the the major national parks yeah right we're like oh you want to go oh wait that's that's poughkeepsie <laughs> you're not doing <laughs> yeah, anything don't, there don't go there <laughs> No, I got I got married in Hudson, New York, which is a lovely okay. town on the Hudson River, and uh, I cannot recommend it highly enough for visiting. It's great. Hudson, yeah, it's where? Very cute. How far up the Hudson is that? It's up by like Kingston. Uh, oh, it's, I think it's okay. near uh, all. It's like thirty miles south of Albany. It's like most of the way to Albany from New York City. Okay, so, so I, I went to college in New Paltz, so that's like oh yeah, it's near five there. miles away. It's near there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cool fucking place. awesome hiking there when it's not like every person who's never hiked before trying to learn because they can't adventure. That's hilarious. <laughs> Dude, Snow Canyon looks really cool. It's it does, place. doesn't it? It's a lo- yeah. it's a great little it's place. Yeah, yeah. So it's beautiful. We we were my dad and I had a trip planned for Iceland uh, in October of all times. Cool. Me too. But, because, yeah, we, we both had Iceland trips planned this fall, and I, I can't speak for Ross, but mine's been postponed because dad doesn't want to fly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, I don't think they want us right I now. I mean, are you allowed to go to Iceland right now? Yeah. I'm not sure you are. I think I it might know. be two week quarantine mandate. Yeah. Even yeah. so. But my, my pivot is North Rim of the Grand Canyon, then. Oh, cool. Because I'm assuming. I forget which rim I did. did I, is the North Rim the, the one that most people go to? No, it's South. No, it's South. It's the South is, Rim. I've, yeah. done, I've done the South Rim like uh, two years ago, which was great. I've never done North Rim. Is it awesome? Which is, so I haven't done it yet. We're, we're going to go hopefully here into September. But that's kind of my thinking of I want to go to the one where no one goes. Yeah. Right. I just want to be right. outside. I just want to yeah. have maybe the possibility of some facilities nearby, but really I don't give a shit. <laughs> there's, a place, there's another one that's a small, a, a small one that's in the middle of nowhere that nobody goes to called Goblin Valley State Park in Utah, which is probably the best place in America to eat mushrooms because it's that, the, uh, it's <laughs> all the, the it's Galaxy the mushrooms. Quest, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's in a, it's in a bunch of like sci-fi movies, but no one really knows where it is, but I've hiked. Oh, there. <laughs> it's the best yeah okay. Goblin, it's, yeah, got, it's on like sort of the eastern side of utah it's not really near anything and so a lot of people don't really bother but but it's it's really, it's really awesome badass. yeah it's a great place yeah that looks crazy yeah I, my, my thing is like once once i'm out there like any public land is available like i'll, I'll chill for a campsite like Oh yeah, well, and there's in like Utah and shit. There's like yeah. so many places you can just like pull over and be camping, pretty much. Yeah, which is it's, it's we, awesome. We had a guy on who went to Iceland, and that's literally how he spent all of his time in Iceland. Was in a Suzuki Jimny, and yeah. he just pull over at night and sleep. You can do that in Iceland. Iceland's a really cool place. It's it's very very pretty. Um, the people are super friendly. 
it's almost impossible to get lost that ring road. <laughs> really, <laughs> right. <laughs> really very, very easy. One way um, in, one way out. Well, and, and yeah. you got a McLaren too, right? So just keep going fast enough. You'll just do another loop. <laughs> yeah. I have the only McLaren that's ever been to Iceland. And, uh, that's crazy. And, yeah. That was neat. They, and, but they know you're coming. They, they, they ever, there's like, you know, I think there's like 180,000 people yeah. and locals in the whole island. So they all know each other on Facebook. And so there, <laughs> there's like, they, I get places and they'd be like, we were expecting you. Yes. We were expecting what? Oh, was that the S or the GT? It was a GT, but it was a GT. in Iceland, the fuck is the difference? No, it's so, it's so, by far I the went, fastest car that's ever been to Iceland. I was at the. I treated uh, that road, that country, like my personal racetrack for five straight days. It was awesome. Seriously. They no, are not I, I was, expecting someone like me in a car like that. They're a very obedient culture. <laughs> how much do you say burgers were? <laughs> I remember that really conversation. Expensive. No, it's really that. The downside of Iceland is that, um, you know, things have to be flown there. Uh, right. or shipped there and, and 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 not everything is local and so stuff is really expensive yeah. you have to like and sheep like, right food huh or it has to be lamb isn't that like their only livestock yeah. Well, yeah. Lamb yeah, or the fish. Ho- horse horse Ugh, they gross. eat fucking horse there zach I'm out it. zach did it in iceland yeah he oh. did he did he said it was all right too actually um uh but uh, like it was chicken. a great uh <laughs> No, you know what he said? It was like kind of like an elk, like elk, okay. like caribou kind of thing. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. See, I um, it was nice to go on somebody else's tab for sure. See um, that it is it is a really expensive country. Um, mm. It's one of the most expensive places you can go, but you know it's also one of the most unique places you can go. Mm. So you can't. It's hard. It would be hard to. Uh, you get the same vibe. Uh, the South Island of New Zealand is very similar to Iceland, except it's actually prettier. Really? Okay. Um, it, and yeah. three times the flight length. <laughs> it's really far. It is far, but it's cheap once you're there. It's it's, oh, really? it's shockingly affordable. Yeah, yeah. New Zealand rules. Um, Never would have guessed that. Yeah, it's amazing. It's New Zealand's one is the prettiest place I've ever been, and uh, it's very good. And but Iceland is also very good and. Uh, and considering it's very close to the East Coast, you know, mm. it's it's worthwhile for sure. Right. Um, um, just prepare for expensive food. That's all. Right. right. No, but just to go back to the McLaren, I was at the North American Shores unveiling of that car at mm. Greenwich McLaren. Uh-huh. And they pulled the wraps off it and everybody was like, there was like that tension in there. And then it was like, uh, because <laughs> there was, there well, was also an the LT. It was like the same. Yeah, it was the same thing with some leather. And there was like, there was an LT in the showroom. Well, what do they expect? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I don't but know. Like, but well, that's you know, McLaren. I mean, that's McLaren. Here's our new model. It's pretty much like the last one we just made. Yeah, things have come a just long a little way better. since then. But um, yeah, the 720 is experience. the jam. 720 is so hot. Everybody says I'm about that. I'm about that 720 life. <laughs> I think we all would be. Yeah. yeah. They had two of them parked out front at Miller. I don't know if you know Miller Motor Cars, but they had a couple. Of I know Cindy Cobbleman from back in the day. Uh, I know okay. about Miller Motor Cars. <laughs> yeah. I, when I was 15, I used to, you know, I'm from Greenwich. When I was 15, yeah, I used to wash yeah. cars at Miller, Miller Motor Cars. Oh, no shit. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. My Vanquish yeah. was delivered new at Miller Motor Cars as well. Hmm. They got a good collection going on. Yeah, no, they, got, they got some shit over there. Yeah, this is – for those who have no idea what we're talking about, we're talking about the – collection of exotic car dealerships in Greenwich, Connecticut called Miller Motor Cars. They're very expensive. They do well. Yeah. <laughs> they do. Greenwich is a really nice place though. I mean, it's a, Greenwich perfect, is really it's nice. a perfect place for a dealer like that. Like I don't, I, I enjoy it when I go back to, to Greenwich to visit my folks. Like it's a, it's a really nice place to spend time. I have, Somebody said that Greenwich Avenue is like the closest thing in the Northeast to like a Beverly Hills, like downtown strip. I was like, oh, eh, that's, a, that's, that's not, that's, not inaccurate. It's probably true. I mean, I think like Fifth Avenue in Manhattan is probably closer to Beverly Hills than true, Greenwich okay. Avenue is, but mm. but Greenwich Avenue certainly has a lot of the same kind of shops that you would find. Same uh, money in, floating around in a Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah. Greenwich is Greenwich Avenue is very 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 nice. It's a yeah. very nice name. Greenwich. I mean, rest in peace, car events in the Northeast, but they they put on a really good cars and coffee on Greenwich yeah, Avenue. <laughs> They do. The cars and cars and coffee and grass is very good. Yeah, it's yeah. like, I just remember it was like a uh, carbon fiber bodied Hellcat, carbon fiber, like full carbon GT350, four Paganis, uh, like Aston Martin 177. <laughs> just yeah. the strip was like, oh, okay. 
see sounds what's going right. on here. Yeah, that sounds just like Greenwich. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the antith. Chris, go ahead, Al. No, but no, the no. road. The more importantly than the ridiculous cars is that the the topography of that part of the world means that. Uh, you typically are driving canyon-like roads just to get places, yeah. which is very nice. You know, I came from growing up in that, like my commute mm -hmm. home from work involved like really windy, awesome back roads that I would get to start my day with and end my day with. And, and now living in Los Angeles where it's a, I have the, the roads I film on, it's like an hour and 20 minutes away, but my regular day to day is a, is a grid and so so i definitely miss uh just daily driving around greenwich and whenever i go visit my mm -hmm. parents back there like you know if i have to get in the car here in la and go somewhere and it's 20 minutes like that's a hard 20 minutes versus 20 minutes like you know growing up on the east coast like i'd be in greenwich i'd go visit my friends like in tarrytown like yep. across the tappan z what do they call the fucking bridge now what's the new bridge oh the, is it the cuomo bridge is it really i, can't I think so say that. Um, i can't even say that with a straight <laughs> face but whatever that bridge is dude uh, crawl go across that and I'm like pretty you know, sure you that's what it is you know you were moving right. and turning the wheel and stuff so it wasn't uh it wasn't as weird so they don't have the as good of roads as we have but the average drive from place to place is certainly more interesting than uh, than what I do here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Sorry, I thought my cat was behind me there. <laughs> no, my my next topic does not involve roads. Uh, okay. I, I really I like didn't to, realize there was topics, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, try. <laughs> I really like to pick your brain about the Tahiti trip. Okay, I recommend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, are, you a are you a sailor? I'm not, but. I like it. Does that make well, sense? Okay. Yeah, sure. I I'm mean, in Kansas. It's it's kind of hard to get into <laughs> sailing in Kansas. Like. Okay. Yeah. So back backstory. Right before pandemic, um, in, in the second half of February, my wife and I and Zach and uh, a couple other friends uh, chartered a yacht in Tahiti, which sounds baller as fuck, but it actually was fairly reasonable because I am a captain. Um, and this is from before my car, like life, like back in the day, like I was always into cars, but like when I was a kid, I was a really big sailor. I used to, I used to race little uh, dinghies. I, I raced lasers. They were called, um, in, you know, single handed boats. Mm -hmm. I raced a, a blue Jays. I raced flying Scots. And then I raced some big boats as a, as a crew member, um, uh, various, yachting type events this gets really white warning and uh i went to sailing camp in the caribbean and scuba diving camp and and ultimately i got my um you know i i, I actually am a scuba diving instructor and Are you really so yeah i haven't Holy paid shit. my insurance in like a decade but i right. but i am a patty instructor yeah <laughs> And uh, I'm now he's certified, so we can definitely. Are you? Go. Yeah, cool. we can go have a trip. I, I love at least. diving. <laughs> diving is fucking great. And yeah, my wife's I mean, dad is too. Not it's me. So <laughs> great. In a, in a, if I, my life had taken a slightly different turn, I could have easily just been a scuba diving instructor like forever. You just know in the I mean? islands forever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was <laughs> yeah, easy. I get it. <laughs> it was it's really, not a bad really, way to live. Really oh, easy, man. and all them guys seemed like they were fucking happy. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody um, seems upset doing that job. <laughs> yeah, no, it was very chill. What's that phrase about nobody's sad riding a jet ski? <laughs> right yeah, yeah yeah exactly money can't buy happiness but it can buy <laughs> yeah but it can buy a jet ski yeah um and so so anyway i i became a, a certified skipper and i've always loved boats and in the last uh few years oh hey buddy in the okay. in the last <laughs> few years um i've been uh able to to charter boats for mm -hmm. vacation and in, in a couple of different places including uh, including Tahiti. And then we did, we did Thailand two years ago. Right. Um, and there's a company uh, called the Moorings that I chartered from. And actually mm -hmm. it's the, the same company that my sailing camp when I was a kid chartered from. So, so I called them up and I was like, that's was intentionally. And I was like, Hey, I got my, th and they're like, ah, we love getting the campers back later to rent boats. And oh, that's so, pretty funny. So, yeah. So we chartered a, a 50 foot catamaran in Tahiti. Oh shit. And we, and we sailed around. You know, and, and so you didn't have talk. to hire somebody so that no, like, that saves so much money, so much, it's probably crazy. like it's, half the price of the rental, right? I think it would double if you had to have a crew with you. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. So, so it, you know, if you and if and if you have a 50 foot boat for two people, you know, it's expensive, but there's it's four staterooms and there's mm -hmm. plenty of yeah. room. So, so we had four couples and there was plenty of room for that, and it was it was fabulous and it ended up being extremely 
shockingly cheap. And Tahiti is just, you know, one of the most beautiful places you can ever go. I mean, it's, the, the color of the water is so crazy. And the, just the way that the lagoons, like the, this whole like lagoon system they have is like really, really crazy. I've never done any sailing like that, but like the islands are surrounded by these coral reefs. So those break the waves offshore, mm. creating these lagoons in in the islands and there's entrances into the lagoons that you can go in but you can't just go up to the island from any direction mm. so you enter the lagoon and then once you're in the lagoon it's like crazy calm so unlike sailing in the caribbean or sailing really anywhere where you would find like a cove and drop anchor in a cove in tahiti you don't do that you go out to the edge of the lagoon and drop anchor by the reef that way you're back really? here and mm -hmm. looking at the whole island and you're on this you're on this edge of this shelf so you drop anchor in like 20 feet but then the shelf comes up to you know those very famous pictures you see of like five feet of perfectly clear water and a sandbar mm -hmm. with the boat anchored next to it like that's what the anchoring looks like that's crazy okay. yeah yeah it's really really neat it's it's totally unique um sailing um so the only waves you really have are between islands like in between when you the would... islands okay. correct correct it's glass smooth inside the mm. lagoon it's amazing that that's i've nuts. never seen anything like it and it's it's, it's good for navigating sleeping. the lagoon is kind of tricky uh you do have to like really kind of pay attention you could i mean if you're not paying attention you could fuck up very badly um <laughs> And, and you like have, all you know, good things with engines <laughs> correct yeah correct correct you could you you if you think i got this i don't need these instructions i don't need these tips hold my beer i don't yeah, need these fucking seriously. people oh. you could fuck up really badly but if you've got some you know humility about it and you go the guy who wrote this guide knows exactly what they're doing <laughs> i'm just gonna listen to this because it's all new to me it's you just know, read the fucking manual yeah. pretty much pretty yeah, much just pretty follow much. that and if you don't uh. know ask somebody <laughs> you know, right. one of the best things about you know it's really i i was so nervous both in in thailand and tahiti to to, to charter a yacht in a a, a country that has a, a foreign language now fortunately there's enough english in both places that you can get mm. by but the good news is both of those countries have really good cell phone service so oh, really ever had it, yeah yeah the, a lot of these countries that you might call quote third world, which is a bit of an insulting term because they're developing, developing, developing countries. Developing. Thank you. That's yeah. better. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, thank you. That's, I, I didn't have the word right there. It's been a long day. Um, they skipped over landlines and went straight to 3G and 4G. They're like, we don't, you know we don't need mean? telephones. Yeah. So yeah. So 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 they have really good connectivity everyone just went straight to landline wow. straight to mobile phones and so and so yeah you can be sailing around uh, offshore in some of these places and have total uh cell service total so that's that's good i mean not like i want to check my twitter but right you know google maps is like a great map mapping that, program oh hell yeah and, download and, maps offline that's the best yeah, yeah and so and if you know god forbid something happens you know you want to know that you can make a phone call and have right and sos have yeah, you it's don't want to deal the radio. You don't want to fuck with in a foreign, like, you know, <laughs> no. a foreign country. It's like you can at least call the yacht charter people. Like, ah, help me, bro. Right. Yeah, Probably better I cell might... service there than like the fucking hillbilly woods of Pennsylvania where we go off. Yeah, or there's no cell service where I go film where my where I film my videos. Really? Zero. No, none. Because hmm. that's where you had right. the issue. Did you have an issue with the Tesla, or somebody else had an issue with the Tesla? Like up out Not of cell me. range and like the phone wouldn't oh. then let them back in the car because the phone oh, no. was the key. Oh, I remember oh, no, that that's story. That's terrible. That uh, never happened to me, no. Was that, no, it might have been the motor train guys. Maybe. I, I can't remember who. I can't remember either. <laughs> that sucks though. That's <laughs> pretty funny. It might have yeah. It might have been Jeff. Sometimes things don't was it Jeff? need to be higher tech. Was it Jeff? Um, I can't remember now. I want to say yes because <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> A key works good. <laughs> key, yeah, key, key works good. Work. It, it wasn't broke, didn't need fixing. So mm -hmm. you, you mentioned B-roll earlier. And mm. la last week I got gated and watched Wind because it was on, God, what was it on? Amazon? Wind, the sailing movie with Matthew yeah. Modine? Oh, I love oh, that God. movie. <laughs> I love that movie. Well, they call I, it the Whomper. It goes <laughs> whomp. <laughs> it just goes whomp. But I hadn't seen it. I fucking it. love that movie. I saw that you know movie. My favorite part of that movie is they're racing these sailboats, right? It's like a best of three, the very end. On like race number three, 
Boat one smashes into boat number two. Yes! Okay. All right, fine. That actually does happen in sailing. Google Google yacht racing crashes if you want to see some crazy shit. But that does happen. Oh, that's a rabbit trail yeah. I'm going on yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely go down the yacht racing. And you're going to – Oh, that's expensive. Dude, oh, when you do that so – Ross, you're going to end up like me, and your YouTube recommendations are just getting <laughs> yacht tours for the last right. I mean, few weeks. <laughs> that's better so, than the shit, like the fucking off road crashes. That I right. like. but, the, but you know the, the rock bouncers? Okay, they have yeah. the best crashes. But, the, but after they crash into each other, there's still one more race. Yeah. For some reason, they agree to throw out all rules. Yeah. There are no rules for the, after this major crash. They just go, you know what? Fuck it. No rules. And that somehow is how you that makes sense. So the, the major crash, the other, the home country yacht loses. That is a good ass. place to freeze. Oh, fuck yeah. Perfect. We don't no! have to touch the wind anymore. That's a screenshot right there. It's a really, it's a really, <laughs> I've never seen it's, it. it's, it's, it's kind of, it's in a, it's a fun movie in a very corny way. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Are we back? Chris, yeah, you just jumped now. through time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I do the You're looking at now, sir. <laughs> you're good so yeah oh, okay i i have to because you're the only person i think i can gripe with this about um <laughs> <laughs> the, they crash into each other so that should be like hull damage right yeah in theory in theory the one boat loses a mast yes and that's the home country boat that should have all of their extra stuff there but they no longer have another mast yeah, and they so only the, brought they only brought one mast, and the visiting country has an extra mast. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, exactly. Like the visit, and they and they make a point before that to say, Geronimo is. They've only been running one boat That's the whole the, time. They have yeah. no spares. That's the American uh -huh. boat, obviously. Uh -huh. Yeah, because it was built on a shoestring, but they've got an extra mast. Mm -hmm. But they've got an extra mast to give to right. the boat. Like yes. I guess at the end of that movie, and that like I mean I, I know it's a fun movie. Like not. <laughs> <laughs> That's not factual in any way. <laughs> no, the, it turns out the movie about sailing is not that factual. Although there's some sailing nerdery in there that I, as a, I, that movie came out on, I think, 1994, two. five, two. two. I'm two. on IMDb looked, right now trying to see right, if I cool. even recognize it. So, they, so that, that movie, yeah, Matthew Modine, Jennifer Grey, um, was it Cliff Robertson, is that his name, who played uh, the, is, the, is that the older Weld? The older guy, yeah, yeah. 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 And then, um, Skarsgård. Oh, and then Skarsgård. Yeah, Skarsgård yeah. is in it. And then there's a couple other – it's not like Peter Berg, but who is the guy who puts all the Peter fucking Berg. zinc <laughs> on his face? Is it Peter Berg? It's not. No, 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 no. The guy who puts all the zinc on his face, too. It doesn't matter. But, oh, um, his, he's Charlie in the movie. But, yes, uh, exactly. No one that sounds, this conversation. Sounds like it makes <laughs> as much sense as the racing movies where if you want to go faster, you just push on the gas more. Danger right. to manifold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. just put up – well, in the <laughs> – yeah, pretty much, Fuck. pretty much. There's a scene in the beginning of that film where they're racing uh, these little dinghies called International 14s, which are some of the fastest, scariest sailboats you can imagine sailing. They're um, they're hydrofoil boats, okay. so they just oh, they rise out of the terrifying. water. So all that's in the water is the fucking fin, and you're <laughs> off and you're off the hull on these like yeah. trapezes, mm, and, nope. and they're they're like knife edge sailing. They're so sketchy. Yeah, I took man. a hydrofoil in Italy and it fucking like I'm good on anything that moves. It scared the shit out of me. <laughs> oh man, it was that terrifying. Much mass there out were of the water. Suitcases falling out of shit on the sides. Like it was <laughs> not a pleasant experience. That sounds so very funny. Italian. Yeah, uh, it was, they don't and, give a fuck in Italy. They're oh, great. But it went fast. We're smoking inside. Nobody gave a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's Italy. Yep. Uh, so do you, what else so you guys got? Do you have a better movie than Wind? Or is that is that like peak sailing? <laughs> oh, a, a better sailing movie? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think there is. A, Master and Commander? Like, that's not... That's, that's not the White same Squall? Same. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, Wind is the, uh, best, the best competitive sailing movie uh, out there as far as I know. <laughs> if anybody knows if there's more. <laughs> what I'd really like to know is who's got Geronimo. Where's the boat? Who's got oh. it? And who's racing it in like a club race? every wednesday you know like a beer can race going you guys know this is the boat from wind right <laughs> like also, there's a you know there's a guy um who runs like i um i don't know what the class is but it's like vintage nascar like they do mm -hmm. they drive vintage nascars on road courses and he drives one of the days of thunder um no shit really like mellow yellow cars yeah really? yeah and i think i think they had two or three of them for the movie and he's got one he fucking races it it's awesome <laughs> 
That movie kind of rules. It still does. I oh, think that was like one of the reasons I got into cars was because I was like two years, three years old. And my dad was just watching that nonstop. <laughs> Dude, Days of Thunder uh, unash- unashamedly rules. Days of Thunder is fantastic. It's a, it's it's a car so guy. Bad. That's a car guy staple. You have to know that movie inside yeah. and out. You know? oh, we just had Chris, you know, our, in our uh, Slack chat for Hooniverse, we had a conversation about uh, Ford versus Ferrari. And mm-hmm. I, I just, I can't love it. Like I just, I've tried. I just can't. <laughs> I don't know. I know it just seems like I understand that. I AJ's book is better. The, the what? The, yeah. AJ's, AJ's book's book better? is better. And he got well, no of fucking course, credit AJ's for book's it. Better. But well, that's a that's a whole separate story. But you can like or not like the movie without the, without the politics of it. I thought yeah, they did yeah. a pretty decent job. I mean, it was mostly factual. Mostly, yeah. The things that weren't factual. I didn't. I mean, I didn't really like that they made um, Ken Miles sit at home for sixty-five, which obviously yeah. he didn't do. He obviously yeah, like he raced went to the race. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I but like in the movie where he's it. like, he's yeah, in the movie he's listening to the radio, going, "You guys better grow easy on the transmissions. You're gonna break them." I and then, right. oh, what what happened in sixty-five? Oh, Ken broke one of the transmissions. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, cool. So that's fun. Yeah, and they made they made Leo BB really like evil yeah. where and like yeah mean, whereas he was just kind of incompetent in real yeah. life. <laughs> um, so just, i felt bad for that for leo yeah. bb a little bit um and it i thought was... i thought matt damon was a just a fucking horrid carol shelby <laughs> just looks nothing like him Not but everyone all, else yeah. i mean i actually you know i thought everyone else it was very well cast i mean christian bale Same. did great um, who He's was always the guy? The guy who great. played Phil Remington was like fucking mm-hmm. oh. aces. Yeah. Um, the end. The all the Italians, uh, yeah. including the Enzo character, were great. Yeah. Um, I thought it was very well cast, except for fucking Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah, he not, was just. It's not believable as Carol yeah. Shelby. It was pieces like that <laughs> that, that felt reason. forced so to me. Said, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But well, the most I, egregious example of that is John Travolta playing. Um, What's his name? Fucking OJ's lawyer. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, Robert Shapiro. <laughs> OJ, John Travolta playing Robert Shapiro. Uh, it's like, yo, I'm sorry. Robert Shapiro is a straight man. You have made that character <laughs> observably gay. Flamboyant. That, that, yeah. that is a flamboyantly gay character. And that person you're basing it on is most definitely straight. So, okay. Whatever, John. <laughs> I never would have come up with a guy who played Phil Remington. It's Ray McKinnon. No chance. Is that the father yeah. or relative of Kate McKinnon? Ooh. That's a good uh, question. Not mm-hmm. based on what I'm seeing. Yeah, that guy was on point, though. Because he's from Georgia and she's from New York, right? Uh, if, God, if you know that, yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, sure. The Hollywood nerdism right there. Uh, guys, I got about five minutes. You want anything else you okay. want to cover before I have uh, to go? I'm sorry, I have to. I have to be out. But. <laughs> That's we, okay. We have not talked about the Sherp on the podcast. Yes, we, I experience. was trying to pivot from one, one water going thing to another. And it's, yeah. Oh, the Sherp looks, rules. Yeah, the Sherp looks a like new the most one. fun. That's called the Sherp what? N. It's bigger. Yes. Is yeah, that like I Veloster think, N? <laughs> it's more like. Uh, no, I don't have a joke there. Um, <laughs> It's bigger, I think. They invited me to go drive it, but Road and Track didn't want to fly me up there this time. It was a little inconvenient to get to Bemidji, Minnesota, unfortunately, as fun Jesus. as it is. Um, the Sherps are, are really, really cool. They're sort of quasi-street legal. They're street legal in places you can get drive a tractor on the street. They're basically registered as tractors. And it's a, um, a four or six or ten-wheel drive uh, uh, amphibious uh, vehicle. You drive it sort of tank style it's somewhere between a tank and a car it has three pedals traditional manual transmission there's a five speed shifter traditional manual transmission i didn't realize and that. then, that's weird yeah so you shift with your right hand and you do your pedals with your left you don't um um it has a brake pedal but you don't use it because it's geared so low that all you have to do is let off the throttle Split. And it, mm. yeah, and it, and if you need to brake, you can like you you don't use the brake pedal. So your right hand is on a five speed shifter. Your feet are on three pedals, just like a manual car. And your left hand is on a pair of levers, two two vertical levers that are next mm. to each other. And you can 
manipulate one or the other or both. And so you, you know, you drive tank style. So when you, the levers are let go, you go right. straight and you pull one or you can either, it's a two stage. So you pull one like an inch yeah. and that just decouples the powertrain and it coasts, or then you can pull it more and it breaks. And then you can do that okay. with your side. So you okay. break, you coast or break either side to, to turn. So is that right. like a, is it like a 30 minute to an hour adjustment period to just figure <laughs> that out? <laughs> You know what? I picked it up real fast. I mean, okay. I, I think if you're not used to driving weird shit, then it might take a little while to figure right. it out. But like, right. there were days, you know, a couple of years ago where I drove seven different people's cars in one morning, you know, at speed. And mm -hmm. so, if you can do that comfortably, then you pretty pretty and well each, in tune. And I've done, I've done like cars with hand controls and shit, and pick that up really quickly. Like I played with one of those last stuff. week. Yeah, it's it's interesting. The first five seconds is it's like driving a clutch the first time. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I find it very interesting to try stuff like that with hand controls and, and weird stuff and and so um no I th I thought the Sherp was fairly easy. It's not yeah. it's not a difficult thing to drive and it doesn't go very fast. So you know whatever happens, <laughs> right. it's, it's, I think the top speed is twenty five or something. So whatever happens, it, it happens relatively slowly and. You know, whatever you crash into, you're gonna run over pretty much, and or, or you know, you can drive into a lake or a river or an mm -hmm. ocean. You know, you're not gonna get wet. You know, it's got it. It, it oh, floats, man. but it the it doesn't need the tires to float. The right. hull itself the body. floats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need yeah. mixed terrain Sherp spec racing. <laughs> you know, that's called the Paris to Dakar. I believe, oh, <laughs> I okay. believe is pretty close yes, to where you're at there. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. The it's range not very fast in the water. It's only yeah. like I think it goes right. like four miles an hour in water or something. But Still. but the range is like two thousand plus miles. That's fucking yeah. crazy. I wonder yeah, how many of these things like a, they've sold. A lot. A well, lot. They're really? not, they are yes, not cheap. A lot. They're 120k, which I think is actually quite cheap for what you're getting. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I believe you. Where, yeah, you, you where, where you gonna build me a truck that goes in a fucking ocean also no. for less money than that? I think you're getting a ton. Not for right. yeah, not for less money. Yeah, drive yeah, straight I, down a beach. When they gave, told me it was only 120, oh, I was God. shocked. I thought they. I said. I said if this was 200, I'd still think it was about. <laughs> if you gave <laughs> Hennessy enough just time with a six it. by six. <laughs> Uh, Google just auto corrected it to how many Sherpas have been sold. <laughs> oh, that's oh hilarious. shit! That's, that's, not that's not good. Don't that's sell not. Sherpas, people. Uh, no, yeah. no, no, no. I don't know. They. I, I mean, look. I know for a fact Kanye bought ten. 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 Well, he has that oh big God. ranch in Wyoming, so he's like he's like Sherp's best customer. So, um, and you know what, dude? If I if you have a, if you have a big ranch, there's a lot of people that can can uh use them for land surveying or for okay. businesses like that they sell Marshland a bunch of them that. to um arctic like rescue snow yeah. and ice rescue frozen lake rescue um they can outfit them in different ways there's like Dude, an the, ambulance type package yeah they, one. Oh, they have one with 10 wheels it's like an ambulance and it's like right it's, it's a 10 by 10 yeah it's got yeah. A, it's a, the sharp trailer that it tows and you can do a bunch of different stuff with that thing like you could basically make it like a bus you yep. can make it like an rv you could make it a utility trailer like there's crazy mm -hmm. shit you can do there's, there's some i think the dude who invented the sherp built that 10 by 10 one first they sell it now but right he was the first one to build that i think he drove around the world yeah, didn't he build it for himself? Yeah, yeah. And he, then he drove around, the, and people were like, yes, you will give me that, that 10 by 10. I will, I will have that. <laughs> Russian oligarchs just showed up, and we're yeah. like, three, no, please. Yeah, right. Seriously, I mean, it, 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 if you have the space for something like that, it, it is the most incredible thing. There's nothing you can't go over. I mean, imagine, <laughs> you know, like a, I don't know if they, I'm sure they call them Jersey barriers where you're from. Imagine yeah, a Jersey barrier, concrete K-rail. 30 miles. I was from Jersey, so yeah. <laughs> right, okay, so you know they're three, three feet tall, right? Three yeah. feet tall, six inches wide. You can drive up and over that in a shirt, straight up and over, mm -hmm. no problem. You don't even have to slow down. What? Just bu 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 bu. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking nuts, you know. And so that it, it uh, that was that thing left an impression. <laughs> mm, yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, it's like the next thing for Arctic trucks to jump on. You know, I keep I keep saying this out loud. Uh, having been to Iceland, I've driven an Arctic trucks. So I drove one of their Hiluxes. Um, mm -hmm. I am absolutely shocked that nobody has imported those kits to America yet. Shocked. Arctic truck kits? Yeah. Oh, it Why? would be like um, 
Bro, oh, RWB. That's they ex- print yeah. money. It's <laughs> exactly ridiculous. What I was say. Why you know? And granted, you know, obviously Nakai San, you know, makes those kits by hand, and he's an artist, and I understand what he's doing. It's it's pretty cool, right? You know, mm-hmm. but uh, absolutely shocked that you cannot that there's not a North American distributor for Arctic trucks. I mean, uh, there's, they sell a bunch of kits that fit on the U S spec vehicles. I mean, yeah, their, yeah. their land cruisers are the same. Like they've mm-hmm. got the vans, they've got a bunch of stuff. Like the Hilux isn't the same as like the Tacoma, but it could easily be adapted. People yeah. are doing much more heinous things to fucking Wranglers and gladiators and forerunners than throwing oh, yeah. a, a Arctic trucks. Arctic cool. truck kit would, on. The Arctic trucks was amazing. The, I drove the one, I don't know, like, 44s or something like mm-hmm. that it was awesome it was are they so changing cool. the axles is like are I different know. axles part of the kit i don't know what they do i didn't i didn't <laughs> i wasn't no i wasn't reviewing it i then okay. i was it was in that iceland trip when, oh. when i was driving the mclaren and when we met up at the end they had one as a support vehicle and i just said can i just like can i just have a go for a second it wasn't mm-hmm. i i wasn't supposed to know that stuff and then okay just I, I don't Fair. know, I don't know <laughs> they have a, i'd be scared of 44s on stock axles oh, they boy. have a kit for 200 series land cruisers from and that's that's only 35s they'll only put 35s on it no, they know what they've they've developed the kits. Up. Whatever they suggest, just get that. But they yeah. they have a Toyota Tacoma kit with forty fours. Oh, do they? Okay, cool. Oh my god, you see some of that stuff in Hawaii. The guys who do like the wide stance, you know, and, oh, and like is, fucking forties. This is so much better than the Hawaiian. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this of course, is very hard. Of course, yeah. Um, guys, I have to go. I'm You're sorry good. to abandon you. You're good. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining. We really um, do appreciate it. No problem. No problem. If you're in LA, come check out Westside Collective Car <laughs> Storage, uh, WCCS.com if you're not in LA and, uh, listen to me on the Smoking Tire podcast. Watch my videos at the Smoking Tire on YouTube. Those are the things. See, you got I the love, plugs down. <laughs> I love that he knows how to do it. We don't even have to ask. Right. Oh, I know. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. But I have to cruise. And thank you for uh, having me. Guys. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Have Matt. a great Matt. evening. You too. Bye. Bye.